in this episode of Alaska State Troopers. Let's go back him up here. The force fights crime in the bitter cold of the Alaskan winter. Whew, this is typical. We're in the negatives right now. State Troopers, we got you surrounded. Come on out. On the hunt for two suspects. We had a trooper involved shooting at this address here about four weeks ago. One who's off and running. I'm on the 16, I'm going to be in a foot pursuit. Go and kill that light. They ran down this way. What the hell's going on? And one who may be up for a fight. Uh, unknown if he's got a gun, he's pretty despondent. So we don't know if he's armed or not. We're not going to take any chances. I know the back seat. You know the back seat? You don't need to put me in the car. I don't want to go in the, in the car. car. You can't fight the law. The law always wins, right? <laughs> winter in Fairbanks, Alaska. With temperatures hovering at 33 below zero, the subarctic air is brutally cold. Just 150 miles away, the majestic peaks of the Alaska Range dominate the landscape. But Fairbanks sits on a relatively flat plain in the heart of Alaska's wild interior. Sergeant Brian Wassman, a 17-year veteran of the Alaska State Troopers, starts his patrol. It's difficult just getting in and out of the car and doing police work and trying to keep your toes warm and your fingers warm when it's uh, below zero is is a chore in and of itself. I think people get conditioned, you know, to the weather to some extent. You know, if they stay out for any length of time, they're going to freeze just like anybody else. A tip comes in that a potentially dangerous fugitive is currently residing in a nearby apartment complex. This guy's wanted for, uh, like I said, it sounds like an assault, and somebody just called in the tip, so. We'll take two troopers over there and see if he's at the residence. This address, anything on this road, is uh, causes a little bit of anxiety because we had a trooper involved shooting at this address here about th four weeks ago. So anytime this street name comes up, it seems to raise a little bit of uh, your level of awareness, I guess, or a little of anxiety. Twenty-five. We're ten twenty-three. Where is he? He just left. He just in what? How did he get out of here? He walked out. What's he wearing? He's a bag, um, black coat, a backpack, black coat. Hair, a backpack. Basically, this is the story. Has been in and out of jail for the last eight years. He lost his job, and then he started drinking a fifth a day. He got kind of pissed, and he walked out. I came down here, and like three <laughs> minutes later, you guys showed up. OK. So he was. He has to be within a mile. Yeah, out. walking distance. Yeah. OK. He just left, so we're going to try to find him here. And he was last seen walking on this road here. So we're going to spread out and see if we can catch him somewhere. So he's about a six foot male, native male. So we, uh, he's close. It sounds like he has a pretty distinct description. We'll probably see him over here somewhere. He combs the streets of Fairbanks, checking local businesses along the way to make sure the suspect hasn't stopped in to get out of the cold. Sometimes the cold weather actually helps us because these guys will leave on short notice when we're we're coming and they can't stand out in the elements for very long, so they're going to have to go someplace where it's warm, so it's, it sometimes can work in our favor. In these extreme conditions, exposed skin can begin to freeze in as few as 10 minutes. Back in his truck, Wasman spots a man that seems to fit the description. Yeah, we're going to check that out. Near a hot like psychology road. Are you? Okay, yeah, you don't look like him. I'm looking for somebody. 
that's a white, white male there. A car pulls in behind the trooper and flags him down. I called in my bro for my brother. Yeah? Do you worried about him or? Yeah, he called my uh, mom. I told her that he's right to shoot himself. And what did he tell your mom? You said he called your mom? That's all it, my mom called me, said, what's going on? He called me up saying he's about to shoot himself in the head. Okay. And everything, and I was like, okay, well, like that's when I called the cops, and like I got disconnected or something. I okay. just kept ringing it up. <laughs> I, I freaking out right now, really. Where do you think he might go to? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if he has a gun or not. When would he make that call? Uh, 20 minutes ago. Okay, does, does uh, your brother have a cell phone? Yeah. You want to try to call him and see if you know, see, see if he'll tell you where he's at? Everything's going to be all right. So just let me know where you are so I can come like pick you up. All right, and we'll do this together. Yes, I do. Come on, don't put it around. Where are you right now? He stopped talking to me. He's like, I'm not going to tell you where you're at. Where you're at. All right, where, where do you think he might go to then? He's probably off in the woods somewhere. Okay. He's not stable right now. Fairbanks' urban core is surrounded by hundreds of square miles of deep wilderness, offering ample hiding places for someone on the run. We must be back in here somewhere then. Okay, we're going to go hit this area again then. With the stakes raised, the troopers and local police stage an all-out manhunt. We don't know if he's armed or not. He sounds like he might be suicidal, so uh, we don't know what to expect here. We don't, uh, we're not gonna take any chances. I just received a 21 from an He states he knows the whereabouts of his brother and gave me an address. Okay, does he have any weapons or anything like that? Okay, I'll be right there. All right, his brother is holding them for us over here. So. Are you 11, How's it going? Turn around or put your hands in your pockets. All right, do you have any weapons on you or anything? All right. I'm just gonna put all your stuff here so we can kind of inventory what you got, okay? Yeah, yeah, why don't you, yeah. Where'd you take that from? Where did he, where was it? I don't know. Who's such? Where'd all this change come from here? That's that jewelry. stuff looks stolen to me. Oh, does it? Yeah, there's a lot of jewelry in there. Right. Is that is that your stuff? It's my stuff. All right. Nothing there. I didn't steal any of that stuff. Whose is this stuff? The, the jewelry's yours? Here's the thing, I'm gonna go ahead and lock these down so they don't get any tighter on you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay? Can we go now? Are you getting cold? No, I'm fine. Okay, all right. I just wanted to just ready to get this over with? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, yes, here's sir. what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit you right here in this back seat, okay? Yes, sir, I know the back seat. You know the back seat? Yes, Step up sir. careful. Watch your head. Just as Wassman appears to close this case, he gets another call from dispatch involving a break-in at a residence only a block away. There's a woman that just reported that her back door was open. She hasn't gone in the house yet. This is really close to what we just handled, so I suspect that this guy that was running from us may have gone into her house to get away from us. I just walked home from work. Okay. And it looks like someone used a sledgehammer or something to break open my back door. Okay. The door was open and I didn't go in because I wasn't sure whether or not someone would still be there. Okay, let's just wait out here out of sight in case there's someone still in there. I don't want to be sitting out there and have someone pull a gun on us or something, so. 
At this point, it's unknown whether the fugitive they have in custody was involved in this break-in or if there's another suspect inside the house. Let's go through the back door there. Hold on. 31-5. You want to hold the corners? Ben and I will go in the house. OK. We got you surrounded. Come on out. Hey. Yep, come in. Clear. Come out. Clear. Okay. You know that uh, some of that stuff that we pulled off. Uh, the guy that we just arrested, there's jewelry in here that's similar to what we just found on this uh, guy that we arrested, so figure this out. Okay, your house is clear. Um, I'll meet you in there. I want to show you some jewelry that I pulled off this guy I just arrested. Oh, great. So. With the house clear, Wasman retrieves the stolen items confiscated from the fugitive. That stuff looks stolen to me. Oh, does it? Yeah, there's a lot of jewelry in there. He wants to see if the homeowner can identify them. I don't know if this stuff looks familiar at all. It sure does. That's this is yours? Yeah. Outstanding. Can I, uh, I'll go back to the office, take pictures of this, document it, and then I'll release it to you. Um, but let's see if there's anything else in here. This is mine. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank God. Thank you. How about Wonder these? Why took a pair of underwear. I don't know. Yeah, we just arrested him like uh, 15 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, and I searched him and um, found those oh. jewelry items in there. Okay, well, Dorothy, I'll, I'm gonna leave these two troops here, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll call you tomorrow and see you tomorrow to return all this stuff to you. Okay. okay. All right. Yep. You know, it's sad that she had property damage and some things stolen, but. In the big picture, uh, we're pretty lucky that we solved this one because we don't we don't solve very many, and we got really lucky on this one. Really lucky. Three hundred twenty miles south, in a region known for its rugged mountains and pristine glaciers, the city of Soldatna sits on the banks of the Kenai River. It's here, Officer Vic Dillon's on graveyard shift for the Soldatna PD. You got any weapons on you? Guns, knives, hand grenades, rabbit squirrels? No. Weapons of mass destruction. Your zipper's down. You're in a car full of guys. What's going on? Dylan's been a cop in Alaska for eight years. Be out on the road as much as possible. The more you're out on the road, the more the more you're going to learn. Uh, it keeps you out of the office. It keeps you active. People in the community see you. They know who you are. It's midnight, and he spots a large group of men arguing outside a bar. They can tell you what I do. I sit by the bar and drink coke and eat cherries all night. Hey, partner. You got with the do-rag? I got hit three times. Okay. So did I, but nothing. What's up with the do-rags and all the red coloring? So you guys aren't bloods? No, no. we're not gangs or nothing okay. like that, man. Right, who's, who's, the guy, who's the guy that just walked inside? Oh, uh, that was That was Problem dude. Child. That yeah. was Problem uh, Child. Right dude. All right, so <laughs> what do we have going on here? I guess dude hit these guys three times. Oh. We can't oh. them come outside at the same time here. No, I'm going to be honest with you, man, he f***ed up my dental work. Let me see. He chipped my really bad. What up? All right, so are you saying you want to press charges against him? Yeah, sure. So you want to go to court and you want to testify that he, sure. he assaulted yeah, yeah, you? Yeah, and yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Because he assaulted me. 
he detains the first of two suspects. All right. Wait right here, don't move. Wait. Ran off the woods. Who did? The, uh, the other guy that hit me, he just ran off through the woods. Stay right here, I'm gonna go run after the guy. Bottom to 16, I'm gonna be in a foot pursuit. Uh, heading north now and uh, near the river. Got one shoe in the woods. It's 15 degrees as Officer Dillon gives chase into the pitch black Alaskan night. We're heading north along the river. With nothing else to go on, he follows the suspect's footprints. Looks like he went in the <laughs> Ten four, that'd be him. I think the footprints are right here. Somewhere. I followed the footprints and they all came out to here. After trekking over a mile through eight inches of snow, the one shoed suspect is still on the loose. Back in his car, Dylan gets word that the state troopers have apprehended the suspect two miles away. I got, I got to ask you a couple questions. First, I'm going to read your rights, okay? What? Ask a question. Okay, you have the right to remain silent. Can you say can't be used against you in the court of law? You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, we'll be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. So you can decide any time to exercise your rights on making statements or answering questions. I have these rights in mind, you wish to talk to me. Well, I ain't got nothing to say to you. So that's a no? Let's go to jail. Okay, so. person right here booked it out the front door uh, ended up losing a shoe in the woods. He's got one shoe that matches the shoe that we found. So this is going to be our boy. Good job, Mr. Trooper. Dylan returns to the bar where the first suspect is still in custody. He was physically assaulted by him. He talks to the victim, and it turns out that the assault may have been racially motivated. So I went outside, and two, three, four other people went outside. And then they started this racial Okay, so which guys hit you? The big guy you have in handcuffs. How many times did he hit you? He hit me once, and the, and the little guy you got that ran through the woods, he hit me twice. Okay. Did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt. It okay. still hurts. Okay. But I'm not do afraid. Need, do you need medical treatment? I don't need medical yeah. treatment. Okay. I need a dentist. That's medical treatment. Well, that's okay. cosmetic. I'll deal with that later. Okay. Dylan approaches the first suspect, hoping he'll say more than his friend who left him behind when he ran off into the woods. Um, right now we got a couple guys in there that are saying that uh, you punched them, caused injury to them, um, that you guys were ganging up on them, and um, they, they didn't fight back because they felt they were outnumbered and, and that it was an assault. I don't feel like you should answer any of these questions without a lawyer. Okay, lawyered up. We're gonna go for a ride in this car over here, here okay? Your partner just kind of left you for uh, the whole rap, didn't he? That's kind of weak. I can't believe he just left you like that. That would suck to have a friend like that. Both suspects are booked into Soldatna's Wildwood pretrial facility. You guys are getting nothing out of me, all right? And record that. Take him back there and talk to everyone. All right. Right now, they're going to be charged with assault and disorderly conduct. Everything ended up pretty good. We got a couple of good witnesses, lots of help from various agencies, and law enforcement wins again.
Back in Fairbanks, in the heart of Alaska's interior, Alaska wildlife troopers are briefing on the opening of the Fairbanks area winter moose hunt. One of the problems we have with our late season hunt is that a lot of the hunters that haven't had a chance to fill their freezer during the normal hunting season, this is their opportunity to still try to fill their freezer for the year. They'll be out attempting to get out as much as possible. A lot of people are ill-equipped when they get out there. A lot of times we find these guys, they don't have the right equipment. Uh, they're already experiencing cold weather injuries or issues and we basically kick into a search and rescue uh, scenario where we actually have to go out and look for these guys, find them. So it's not just law enforcement, but it's also in the safety of the people that are out there because of the weather conditions. Sergeant Scott Quist heads up the briefing. That whole foothill section is, I mean, there were a lot of moose killed there in the last two years. And I expect we'll have guys going in on Saturday night and some people camping out on moose. Before first light, on a morning that begins at 30 below zero, Quist heads out on snow machine. The hunting grounds are a solid 20 mile ride from the end of the road. The wildlife troopers make their presence known on the ground and in the air. A super cub will spot hunters and moose kill sites and relay the information to Quist on his snow machine so he can check them out. So far this morning, the hunters are few and far between. It seems temperatures of 20 below have kept many hunters indoors, but the wildlife troopers continue their search. Quist radios the plane to find out if they're seeing anything from above. Yeah, just checking in, Mike. What do you have for us? There's a moose across the opening there. The pilot spots what looks to be the first kill of the day. Quist heads out to find it. He finds the hunters there as well. Big old girl. I don't know why he shot her in the tongue. <laughs> that was the only damn thing. That was the only thing I wanted was the tongue, and that was his first shot. Just to screw me over. I, this is the one I didn't want to shoot. I saw a much nicer, small one down yeah, by where we saw work. you. Sure would be it helpful if off. you guys could help us get her on her back. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let me take a look at paperwork and then okay. we'll help you flip it over. In my, uh... If the hunter shot the moose without a license and permit, he could face a fine of up to $5,000 and six months in jail. Uh, Matt, so is the, is the plane, is that to give us a ride if you arrest us, or? Sure. <laughs> now we have eyes everywhere. Well, I know. Wildlife Trooper Sergeant Scott Quist uses GPS to make sure the hunters are within the legal hunting area. My GPS says, I'm, if I'm reading it right, it says I'm legit. No, we're legal beagle. Okay. The moose is legal and his paperwork checks out. Quist lends the hunters a hand. Hold on her back. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. You guys are worth your weight in gold right there. A mature moose can weigh up to 1,400 pounds and provide enough meat for a small family for a year. <sighs> We're the only ones you guys found so far that's got anything down out here? The first moose we've checked today, yeah, surprisingly. Well, Alpha uh, hunters. The, uh, the wimp stayed home. It's pretty cold. It's kind of chilly. Yeah, it is. With only one moose kill to investigate, Quist turns his attention to making sure what few hunters are out and about are staying warm in the bitter cold of interior Alaska. Don't see too much rain gear this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it keeps the wind off really nice. It does. How long are you planning on staying out here? Hopefully just another, just through today. But... Well, good luck to you. Well, thanks. Thank okay. you. Take care. Stay warm. <laughs> Thank you. 
these guys didn't look like they were dressed all that warm to me. Held the headsets? Yeah, they had rain gear on, which was kind of surprising. Cuts the wind. Not a heck of a lot of wind out here. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll get buttoned up and continue on down the trail. The first day of the season comes and goes without incident. And for the wildlife troopers, tromping around the Alaska wilds in sub-zero temperatures is just another day at the office. From the frozen wilds of the far north to the relative fast pace of Alaska's third largest metro area, the Matsu Valley is tucked between the rough Alaska range and the craggy peaks of the Talkeetna and Chugach Mountains. Tonight, Trooper Lance Ewers is patrolling Palmer's icy roads. Here in the Matsu Valley, I've seen a lot of heroin and, and a lot of methamphetamine and of course, marijuana. That is the worst drug. I have never met somebody who uses heroin or methamphetamine who didn't first, didn't first use marijuana. Some people think, I mean, you'll get that. You'll even see them out here. Oh, I thought you are allowed to smoke marijuana in, 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 in Alaska. No, it's against the law. Early into the night, Ewers makes a routine stop. Hello, folks. How y'all doing tonight? Hi. Just you, huh? Just me. Reason why I stopped you is because you got a busted tail light. Did you know yeah. your tail light lens is broken? I just bought the car yesterday. Oh, you're kidding yeah, me. No, I'm well, not. Now you know. You got your driver's license on yes, you? I do. I sure do, sir. Here you oh. go. I just moved up here. From West Virginia, yes, huh? I am. You got your insurance and your registration? Yes, I have my registration. And I'm going to be honest, I just bought it yesterday. I honestly did not get insurance. I was just going to get gas and going home. So you can't be driving a vehicle in the state of Alaska without insurance. He contacts dispatch and finds that lack of insurance isn't the driver's only problem tonight. Nine is when she was given the notice. She's got a warrant out of West Virginia, NCIC 1B44. What's the warrant for? Shoplifting. So she does get to go to jail tonight. 10-12. Jennifer? Yeah. Don't step out of the vehicle for me. Sure. Any guns or knives on you, Jennifer? Nope. Nope. Come and walk back here. You see where my light is on the floor? Go ahead and step on my light. Right here on my floor here? Here you go. Right on the floor there. See it? You want me to sit? Nope. Step on it. Go ahead and step oh, on it. Okay. Well, you have a warrant Sorry. for your arrest from West Virginia. Do you remember when you got arrested for shoplifting? Yes, I do. You just didn't go to... Keep your hands in your pockets oh, for I'm me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you not go to court or anything like I, that? Or what happened? I went to court and I know I had a fine to pay, but I, I guess... I... Yeah. Go ahead and spin around. You're under arrest for me. Go ahead and turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Clap your hands together for me. Do you have anything that's going to poke me or stick me or hurt me or anything like that? To be honest, a, I have a bag of... Weed right there? Yes, yes. What are you doing with a bag of weed? I thought... I honestly, I did... I thought it was... I was honestly told it was, we were allowed to have it in Alaska. You were allowed to have marijuana in Alaska? I swear to God, like I swear, I thought that's what... Yeah, yeah no, I, good people stay in Alaska say you're not allowed to smoke marijuana. That's still okay. against law, even here okay. in Alaska. Driving without insurance plus an outstanding warrant and possession charge land Jennifer in jail. Am I going to go to jail for a long time? No, I think you're going to be out of jail tonight. But you got to make some more positive decisions, okay? You're not allowed to be smoking marijuana, number one. That's just yes, silly, sir. right? Yes, you can't bring your lighter with you, but you can bring yes. your smokes. You can't be driving on a suspended driver's license, right? I, I, I didn't even know it was suspended. The total effect is too much for her. She'll get through it all. It'll just be a lot more painful than it is just playing the ostrich and putting your head in a hole, thinking it's all just going to go away. But it's not. <laughs> you can't fight the law. The law always wins, right? <laughs> How often do you indulge in the marijuana? Honestly, I probably smoke like a bowl a day. So it's probably once a day? 
I didn't do it like that till I moved up here because everyone said it was I, I can tell you I've had over 50 people tell me that it was legal up here. Yeah, that's silly. Don't you think? Like, I, re I really, really have. And a lot of people get confused with that. I don't know where that came from, but you're not allowed to be smoking marijuana out here in the public, walking around with marijuana. I think people get confused because you're allowed to have a certain amount of marijuana inside your residence in the state of Alaska. And people think that that is a big green light to go and smoke pot and then go out and drive a car or carry it around and go buy it. And that's simply not the case. Go ahead and step through the door. Okay. Stepped in the hallway there. Yep, you betcha. That was a stupid move, and the cops were just doing their jobs, honestly. I was doing something that I shouldn't have been doing, and the fact that I had stuff on me that I shouldn't have had on me is a big wake-up call. I just, I don't want to ruin my life, and I feel like this is just starting. I'm just scared. Thirty-three miles north of the Arctic Circle lies the now frozen city of Kotzebue, a hub for the region's surrounding villages. Lou Nieves works out of the Kotzebue trooper post. Today he'll be checking up on the village of Selawik, 70 miles east of headquarters. They're not used to having continuous law enforcement there, so this, this should be pretty pleasant tonight. The trip to Selawik is just a short flight from Kotzebue, but Nieves always goes prepared. With an average December high temperature hovering around zero, troopers here always wear their Arctic gear. We break down a lot with uh, the snow machines out there because it's cold, so I also carry in here The faithful rope, tow rope, and, uh, and a first aid kit. And it's just this balance of you can't bring too much because you've got to carry all of it from point A to point B. We're, we're only required to be at the village three times a month is the minimum. But the, these villages just they require more attention. There's a headset over there for you, too, if you okay. want. Thank you, sir. In winter, Selawik is accessible only by snow machine or airplane, and the quick flight is safer than the 70-mile ride in sub-zero temperatures. Well, welcome to Selawik. Whew, this is typical. This is, uh, we're in the negatives right now. Probably, what, negative 20 or so. Winds died down though, at least, otherwise we'd be really miserable right now. Everyone here, they, there's some really good people here, and then you have that, that small percentage that's brewing the homebrew and causing all the ruckus here, and that's why we come out. And the homebrew is really easy to make. Homebrew, you know, they can have a 7% alcohol content homebrew here in about 24 hours. And just about, there's, we have 14 year old kids that know how to make it out here, so. Nieves arrives at 3 p.m. and the sun soon begins to set. With such close proximity to the Arctic, much of Selawik's winter is spent in pitch black darkness with only two to three hours of light per day. Nieves wastes no time in the village and checks in on a house known for wild parties. We're going to a... Uh... A residence has actually been on YouTube. It's a, a residence belongs to a, a Mr. Percy Clark. He's actually only about 20 years old or so, if, if I recall, or 19 years old. And uh, he hosts a lot of 
fight club parties there and a lot of juveniles uh, that should be in school hang out at his house. So got to make sure that uh, there's no juveniles there doing anything illegal or in possession of anything illegal and make sure that they're not running any more illegal fights in, uh, in his home right now. Inside Percy's house, local kids battle each other for bragging rights while bystanders bet on their fights. It's a violent escape during the dark and harsh Selawick winter. Inside, Nieves uncovers the logistics of the Fight Club house. Fight Club. <laughs> My house, the living room, there's the arena for the Fight Club. <laughs> That's the arena right there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Everything's get pushed in one way, on but it's all canceled and closed now. Have you thought about, uh... Should we get to reading? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Does it feel lonely to be here by yourself, or... I mean... Just tired of it. Are you just tired of it now, yeah, or...? I'm tired of it. I'm just seeing the same thing every day. Yeah. Did you just get beat up, too? I'm recovering. <laughs> oh, what man. From Fight Club? Or something uh, else? Percy has tired of living in the Fight Club house and hopes to move to Kotzebue soon to find work. Thanks, let me check. Yeah. Dude. Well, he's not talking, but it looks like he got beat down pretty damn bad there. You think they jumped him over money or something else? In stark contrast to the chaos found in the Fight Club house, Selawick School offers all of the modern facilities of its metropolitan counterparts. But this school here, this is the oasis here. This is where all, the, if, if the kids didn't have this school and after school projects here, they'd have nothing to do but stay at home and get in trouble. <laughs> See you later, guys. Only 40% of the students actually show up daily to this school, which becomes a big issue. And that's, that's the biggest challenge for the staff here is to try to encourage the kids to come in. And it's a partnership with law enforcement because it's one of my jobs when I go and check these homes at night to find these kids that are, you know, still awake at 3 o'clock in the morning and try to figure out what it is that's going on in their lives to encourage them to get rest and show up to school. <laughs> Over 400 miles east, Fairbanks, Alaska has an extreme temperature range. With records ranging from 94 degrees in the summer to 66 below in the winter. From Today, Trooper Eric Jeffords patrols the massive territory assigned to the Fairbanks post. But we range as far out as, you know, 50 miles outside of Fairbanks. You know, usually we try and stay within 15 or 20 miles of Fairbanks. Just that way, if there's, you know, some domestic violence calls or something like that, we could get there quick enough. Of the huge area in his jurisdiction, the city's frozen dike system is the most entertaining to patrol. Yeah, they're getting crazy, especially this guy. It's just one of the ways locals enjoy the frozen terrain. <laughs> Nobody drinking? Nobody's drinking. It's too early in the day for that. OK, just making sure. Like I said, you guys aren't breaking any laws or anything. 
it's, it's a recreation area and uh, just got some guys down here playing on the lake. Makes me jealous, I wanna go. Well, I didn't mean to scare everybody off. Huh? You guys have fun, be yeah. safe. But in Fairbanks, ice is everywhere, and on the city streets, it can be deadly. Trooper Al Bell responds to a report of a motor vehicle collision. An 18-wheeler tractor trailer uh, versus a, a small passenger car. So that's all information that we got at this point. As Bell approaches the scene, it doesn't look good. The truck just came out and I couldn't stop. Okay, what happened? And there's a green light and I just kept going and then the truck came out this way. Okay, which way was the truck coming from? Right there. Okay, so the truck was coming from off the off-ramp of uh, the yeah. Parks Highway. Was he trying to make a left turn or come straight? Um, I don't know, I saw the trailer. <laughs> okay. I look up and I see his truck sliding probably like 10 feet back from that pole. Okay. I jumped out and I can see his truck here. Luckily, both drivers are okay. Unfortunately, this type of wreck is a common occurrence here in February. This time of the year, we have a lot of collisions. It's pretty, it's, it's starting to get warm outside. It's about 12 degrees. I mean, they don't sound warm. The roads get a little slick. A lot of times we come to these collisions and uh, we got uh, people that's seriously, seriously hurt. So it's a good thing that nobody was hurt today. And uh, anytime you collide with a big uh, tractor trailer like this, it's always the odds are usually against you. So today, everybody's okay. Tomorrow's another day. Al Bell continues his patrol on the frigid Fairbanks streets. Bell's been a trooper for 11 years and has become accustomed to the harsh winters. I'd be lying if I said I liked it, so I, I don't like it. Kind of get used to it. I don't mind a little below zero, but I don't like 30 below. I don't think too many folks like 30 below. Number 61. So apparently we got a call, possible gunshots. It's on Jay Street, where Jay Street is completely across the, the other end of Fairbanks. You know, sometimes people say that troopers or police are never there when they need them. Sometimes it just takes us a while to get there. And we drive as fast as we possibly can, but sometimes we just can't go no faster when it's icy out. As he's responding to the scene, troopers are already detaining a woman. Well, then you don't need to put me in the car. I don't want to go in the car. Ma'am, what's your name? Okay, I'm just asking your name. I, I want to talk to you. What's your name? I don't want to just call you hey. What's your name? My name's No, are you doing Okay, the, does terrible. it? terrible. The woman claims she fired a warning shot to ward off hooligans bullying the neighbors. There's three truckloads of people with bats here. So were you trying to shoot at them? No. I was trying to scare them off before they killed the kids next door. What's going on inside? It said there's nobody else in here, just for kids. OK. Inside the house, troopers find a messy situation. Four kids, firearms all over the place, and a wanted felon. Are you supposed to be in possession of any firearm? I'm not. You know, you're not even supposed to be in a residence with one of these, right? I didn't well, know there was any kind of fire on here. Come on, man. There's yeah. guns hanging all over the walls up here, man. You're, you're making us think you're a liar now. Well, well last, this is last year. Everybody's got a gun. The man denies any knowledge of the gun being fired at all. Little does he know, his friend has already admitted to firing the gun. Okay, this is the Glock we got from uh, these folks here. Apparently, this Glock was the Glock that was used to shoot the round. Even after the woman's confession, something doesn't add up. Are we for sure that she shot it? Troopers begin to suspect that the woman is covering for the felon. Is that your boyfriend? No. Is he your husband? No. Yeah, I love reason to believe that he may have shot the gun, okay? But you're saying that you shot the gun? Is that, is that what happened? 
I don't want to talk to you guys anymore. All right, you don't talk to us? Fine. We're going to take you back inside so you can take care of your kids. Is that cool? <laughs> that would be great. All right, come on in. Let's go back inside. They arrest the men and release the woman. Do you understand the rights I've read to you? I've had them read to me a time. We're going to take the male to, to the correction center for the warrant. Uh, we allowed the, the female to, to stand by here and take care of her kids. Um, there's some alleged uh, issues here with the male and her, and uh, there's some belief that he's the one that fired the, the weapon, but we don't know that now. So tonight he, uh, he goes to jail for the warrant, but he gets away with shooting the gun. So sometimes it's kind of that, that's the way it is. All right. Hopefully tonight will be at peace at this house.